In this example, I will describe a pressure volume diagram and just the basics of the diagram. So what I've plotted in the y-axis is pressure. This is megapascals. And on the x-axis, I've plotted the log of the volume because it's a large volume change between liquid and vapor. And then let's look at the various aspects of this line that separates liquid and vapor in a two-phase region. So this region here is liquid vapor. So here is the critical point. And the line along here is saturated liquid. And by saturated liquid, we mean liquid that is at its boiling point. It's a pure component diagram. It's liquid that if we put any energy in, some of it would convert to vapor. So saturated liquids on the left side, and then the line along here is saturated vapor. So this is all vapor. Remove any energy at constant temperature, constant pressure, we would see some liquid form. And so the region in between indicates the two-phase region where if we pick a point, what that point corresponds to is some fraction that's liquid here and some fraction that's vapor over here. If we pick this point, then we're majority liquid. And if I pick a point over here, then majority vapor. And so we can divide this into regions, the region above the saturated liquid and saturated vapor line. So the region above the saturated liquid line is a liquid, not a saturated liquid, but a liquid at higher pressure. The region to the right above the saturated vapor line is a vapor, superheated vapor. And then the region near and above the critical point is a supercritical fluid. It's important to note there's no dividing lines between these regions. There's nothing that says when we cross this condition we go from vapor to supercritical fluid or we go from supercritical fluid to liquid. So in some ways it's an arbitrary distinction. So what we like to look at now is the behavior along an isotherm. So I'm going to draw an isotherm and then discuss the behavior. So I've indicated a constant temperature line, an isotherm. In the liquid region, we can see this region where we have liquid. As we lower the pressure, there's almost no change in volume. Or the other way, of course, of looking at it, raising the pressure does not decrease the volume significantly. And this is because liquids are close to being incompressible. So this is almost a vertical line, but not quite. In this region, we have conversion as we try and lower the pressure. We'll get to a point where an attempt to lower the pressure results in vaporization. And we go from saturated liquid over to saturated vapor. And of course, we have to have energy added to the system for this to take place. And then as we continue to lower the pressure, the isotherm out here then is a gas. And at the lower pressure, of course, it's going to behave like an ideal gas. So pressure, volume, where this is volume per mole, pressure times volume is a constant at a constant temperature. I've drawn a second isotherm. So this green line, notice this is now a lower temperature isotherm because the saturation pressure is lower. The temperature we have vapor liquid equilibrium, but it shows the same general behavior of incompressible liquid, constant pressure and temperature phase change, and then as we get to the lower pressures, ideal gas behavior. And finally, I've indicated here a higher temperature isotherm where now we don't exhibit any phase change because we're above the critical point. And so the idea is that this diagram can be useful for solving 
problems for one component systems where there's phase changes making it easier to visualize the behavior, for example, if we have a constant volume process.